r slash no sleep posted by you slash the dangerous my mother died last year i think i'm next i have two sisters and one father my mother was murdered sometime last year the years leading up to that she'd been acting more and more strange she'd have to go to the toilet quite regularly and eat much more than usual she was also all of a sudden fascinated with flowers and i never got that i remember her to be quite a mathematical person the very same year she died we adopted my second sister i guess that's the way my father coped we never found our mother's body i'm not even sure we reported it to the cops to be completely honest they never called or visited but maybe they did it when i asleep father always forced me to go to bed quite early i was crushed at the death of my mother you might say how do you not remember when she passed away if you were devastated truth be told i don't know the answer to that that time period is a blur in my head i remember crying and sobbing and i also remember the bothered stares i got from my father and sisters they didn't seem sad at all actually i can't remember a single time they cried or looked hurt at all that goes not only for my mother but for the whole time i've known them not a single tear get over it already one of them said to me and i found myself baffled it's my mother i wanted to say but it was also their mother if they could deal with it without crying then so should I, but I couldn't, I couldn't control the emotions inside of me. The clock struck 7, and I was shuttled into my room. My sisters have their own room that they sleep in. They're roughly the same age, a one year difference. I assume that they go to sleep at the same time I do, but I don't know, father always shuttles me up to my room first. He locked the door, as he does every single time. It had never been an issue for me. I had a lot of privacy and I could do a little bit of anything I wanted to do. There was almost a sense of calm when the door locked. Not tonight. I laid down in my bed, and I quickly fell asleep. I guess my body just got used to sleeping then. I woke up a bit later, my stomach felt like it would burr I don't know how long I was asleep, but I wager that it was not long at all as I wasn't even slightly groggy. I really needed to pee. It felt like my bladder would blow up. In a state of panic, I walked over to the door and rattled that handle. It was closed, as always, and I looked back towards my window. I really didn't want to pee on the floor. The last time I did it, my father beat me to a pulp. The open slid open quite easily, but it felt like forever as each second it felt like my bladder would burst. I could have peed there, but there was flowers just beneath. Tall ones with white blades that whistened during the night. My father loved those flowers like nothing else. I was quite sure that my pee wouldn't destroy the flowers. But there was a small chance of it happening in my head, and that chance terrified me. And, the flowers were beautiful after all. So gorgeous. Climbing down the window proved easier than I thought. I was down, and pissing behind a bush in no time. I made sure to stay out of the window's sight. This was quite embarrassing. It felt relieving, but as I was finishing my business I couldn't help but notice the silence from the first floor. The TV wasn't on, and the lights were off. A curious thought waved into my head. What was my father doing? They, my family, was sitting around our table. They were munching on some red meat that looked dried. Beside the meat, their faces, skin and hair, with the holes for eyes and mouth, and two tiny ones for a nose is laid on the table. I had to grab my mouth or I'd let out a scream. Their heads were large and purple, like purple balloons filled with water shaking back and forward. They had a small mouth at the bottom, where their chin should have been, and they slowly put in the meat there. The flowers shrieked. I jerked, ducking beneath the window, full with andron line. I heard the chair sliding backwards, releasing a shriek against the wood floor. In sheer panic, I looked towards the one spot of calmness and safety in my life. I've never climbed as fast as I did. And now I'm sitting in my room typing this up. I'm not sure what I should do. I'm not even sure if this isn't one big nightmare that I'm going to wake up from any second now. I think I need to pee again. The next story of this video posted by you slash life is strange me too there's something wrong with my child it's a monster daddy we should throw it in the trash i stared at my daughter speechless did she really just say that honey this is your baby brother i said he's not a monster and you shouldn't say things like that my daughter just stared at me blankly okay daddy she said Without a word further she turned and bolted out of the room. I could feel myself frown. I had read about this in the parenting books. The older sibling feels resentful of the attention that a new baby gets, and acts out. I was sure that was all that was happening. 
Is Ellen okay? Asked the voice of my wife from behind me. I turned around. Why do you ask? I said. My wife, Mary, was already up and around the house just a few days after giving birth. She was so strong. She walked into the room and stared down at the baby, and sighed. She just said the strangest thing, said my wife. I waited for her to go on, but she didn't. Well, can't be worse than what she just said to me, I replied. She said that Jonathan was a monster, and that we should throw him in the trash. My wife shook her head sadly. She said the same thing to me, she replied. And she said the monster is full daddy, but he can't fool me. Can you believe that? An uneasy feeling of cold crept up the back of my neck. We should sit her down and have a talk, I said. My wife opened her mouth to reply, but yawned instead. Tomorrow, she said. It's late. Yeah, let's go to bed. What's that racket? I awoke confused. I turned on my phone screen to check the time. 2.23 AM. The cloud of sleep slowly dissipated, and I realized that the sound was Jonathan crying in his crib. As I pushed myself out of bed and into my house shoes, a second realization hit me. The crying isn't coming from his room. And, it sounds, wrong. I looked down at my wife. Let her sleep. She's earned it. I followed the sound downstairs, into the kitchen. The crying was muffled, and it was hard to place the source. I stopped dead and strained my ears. It seemed like it was coming from the sink. I approached the sink and stared at the drain, frowning. It's a monster, daddy. We should throw it in the trash. No, she wouldn't do that. Would she? I opened the cupboard door, and, to my horror, discovered my son Jonathan in the trash, lying on bed of coffee grounds and banana peels. Oh my god. I pulled him out of the trash and gently brushed off as much of the damp coffee grounds as I could, while rocking him back and forth and gently reciting Hush Little Baby, his favorite song. Soon, he had drifted off. You should have left him there, came a voice from behind me. I turned to see my daughter, Ellen. Why would you do this? I whisper yelled, careful not to wake my wife. Ellen only shrugged. Monsters belong in the trash, she said. Her jaw was clenched, her nostrils flared. I won't let it hurt your and mommy. Honey? What's going on? I instantly recognized the groggy voice of my wife, and turned to face her. She looked at me, then the baby. Her eyes grew wide. I thought it was because of how dirty Jonathan was. But I was wrong. It was because she saw the knife. She rushed forward, brushing past me in an attempt to put herself between our daughter and the baby. But Ellen was too small and too quick, and she easily dodged my wife's bare hug. I instinctually jerked away, and the kitchen knife only grazed my arm. Mary tackled Ellen to the ground and wrestled the knife out of her hand, throwing it aside so that it skittered across the tile floor. Her face was red, and strands of hair stuck to her sweaty forehead. What the hell is wrong with you? She demanded. Ellen said nothing. Jonathan began to cry, and I looked down at him to inspect for damage. Blood was leaking from a cut on his forehead. Without thinking, I reached down to wipe it off, but immediately jerked my hand back, as if I had touched a hot stove top. I held my hand up to my face in horror, and watched the smoke rise as my son's blood burned through my fingertips, down to the bone. The acrid smell of burning flesh filled the house. My wife, my daughter and I locked eyes, and froze.